I am more excited than ever this week. We're not only are we going to finish off our pirate technique using InDesign and Adobe Illustrator, but we are on the verge of the launch of Adobe CS3 software. I'm actually going to be presenting at a launch party in Adelaide next week. Woo! I love Adelaide. On the 27th, that's when we're announcing... CS3, I say we, I'm be, me being uh, part of the team working as an Adobe ambassador. Hey, I have got a brand new website with a brand new Earl down the bottom. It's got wicked stuff. There's forums on there. You can type questions to me. As a matter of fact, if you have any questions from now on, I'm not going to be doing them via email. I'm going to be doing them via the forum so everyone can read them and perhaps help me answer some of these curly questions that you've got. But don't be afraid to put questions on there and I will be reading every single one of them. Here's the tip. Well, we're back into the Jolly Rogers Restaurant Treasure Map Project. One more thing to go. You can see this time the actual parchment is missing. And we're going to use Adobe Illustrator to create that parchment. So let's switch over to Illustrator, which I have running already. Adobe Illustrator CS2. But for how much longer, I don't know. So let me just select what I've already drawn a little shape here. And we would like to create what I would call a deckled edge around the outside. What's the best way to create a deckled edge in Illustrator? Well, there's probably a number of ways, but I would come over here, right over to the tools here, and I would use these warping tools, which are sitting right here. If I click and hold my mouse down, you can see I have a number of warping tools here. I'm going to go right over to the wrinkle tool at the far right, and just in case you're wondering, there is no anti-wrinkle tool in Illustrator. Boom, boom. It gives you a brush size here. How do I change my brush size? Well, let me tell you this. It's not like Photoshop. You don't use the square bracket keys. In this case, we simply hold our Alt or our Option key down and click and drag up and to the right or down and to the left. And then we can simply go and paint on our shape to create a deckled edge. Let's zoom in and have a good look at that deckled edge. It's adding points and roughening the edge. How wonderful. Why isn't it doing the vertical ones? I hear you all yelling. Well, you don't need to yell. I know all about it. If I double click the wrinkle tool, then we can see there are wrinkle options. Let's turn the horizontal wrinkle options to 100 and the vertical to zero. Now we do this so they don't intersect while we're brushing. So we go ahead and press OK and now we brush down the side to create the wrinkles on the sides as well, giving our image or our shape that kind of rough edged parchment look. We've missed a little bit up here at the top right. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So I'll get my, where is it? My wrinkle tool again and brush it. There we go. Just to randomize this a little bit more, I'm going to zoom in once more and click, and I'm just going to go and get the, what is this one called? Just the warp tool. I think there's some other ones here. They're all fantastic. Have a play with them. The warp tool I'm going to select now. I'll zoom back out, and this time I'm going to make my brush much bigger and elongated. I'm just going to push some of the sides in just to change the overall appearance and shape of my Arr, parchment. And there we have that. How do we then get this into InDesign? Well, let's select it, copy it, jump over to InDesign and paste it. That's right. I can just copy and paste directly into InDesign. And if I come up here and select my direct selection tool, the white pointer tool right up here, we can then pick up the points and handles of our parchment and select them. 
That means this is no longer an, an Illustrator shape. This is an InDesign shape. And we can do things like color it. So let's bring it our swatches. I'll just go down to window and where are you swatches? And we can simply choose a color for it. I've got the stroke selected there. So I'll just flip that over and we'll send that to the back. Shift, control, shift, left, square bracket. And we can start to see what's going on there now. So we have a wonderful looking parchment. Let's go ahead and, and select it and make it a darker color. Again, just making sure we get the fill color and I'll activate that now. If you want to click through to get behind something in InDesign, so select the next object underneath, hold the Apple or Control key down and click. That'll select it for you and then you can just simply move it around or pick it up and move it. Now, a special trick here. We're going to put a little drop shadow. Of course, it's in design. You need to put a drop shadow. We know that. Uh, there we have our mandatory drop shadow. We're going to do something special though. I'm going to select this and copy it, Control C, and do a paste in place. I'm now going to fill our copy with a different color. And I'm now going to feather this by going to the feather command. Select feather. I'm going to turn a preview on and we're going to increase the feather and have a look at the nice soft edge we get around our parchment. Let's give it a bit of noise for a bit of authenticity. Press OK. Last thing we need to do is select it, send it to the back. Select, select our brown shape and send it further back and there we have our parchment. We have two of them. Oh, we can adjust their colors if we'd like the center to be a little brighter. Perhaps we could choose a different brighter color and we can make a wonderful looking parchment on our treasure map. What a grand finale for a fantastic pirate project. I really hope you enjoyed that one. Oh! Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, what a great piece of software. It's nothing compared to what we're going to see next week. CS3 is going to be... Ah, I can't wait. Hey, if you're watching via iTunes, I've just moved the feed to my new Earl that I showed at the start of the show. No, the start of the show was that way. So... If you're on iTunes, you might have to relink. I'm not sure how it's going to work. I've done a redirect from my old post, but there is a new RSS feed, which basically means you might need to subscribe again in iTunes if you've been watching via iTunes. However, if you're watching via VO or YouTube, you couldn't care less. You can just keep watching wherever. Uh, my new website does have the movie streaming directly into it via YouTube and via VO as well. So you can watch via the new website. By the way, my old website still works, which is down the bottom. So don't be afraid to do that. Stay tuned because as of next week, the Adobe are lifting the skirts on CS3 and I'm going to be able to show you tons of wicked new stuff and I'm going to have some stuff posted for you ASAP. Stay tuned. Fun time.